on the 10th of May of this year in Jerusalem. The period just before and around prayers was relatively calm here at Damascus Gate, but in the last few minutes... Israeli armed forces have met Palestinian civilians with rubber bullets and stun grenades, and this is nothing new. The conflict between the two sides has been going on for the same reason it's been going on for 73 years now. Who are stealing my house? Who should own Jerusalem? Jerusalem has been under occupation ever since the year 1948, or at least half of the land, ever since the Balfour Declaration, where Jews were given the right by the British government to create a state in the midst of the Palestinian homeland. Conflicts ever since have been taking place over the potential eviction of Palestinians from land claimed by Jewish settlers, and Palestine and Jerusalem has been under constant, constant tension. Which turned a thin slice of British-controlled Palestine into Jewish and Arab states. And then there's the political aspect. If things get a bit shaky, it can lead to unrest. My Palestinian friend in Vancouver, Hannah Kawas, who was born in Jerusalem, can't even visit. And the fact that such a conflict lasted for more than 70 years now really does surprise me. On one hand, a group of individuals who once immigrated to the land of Palestine were given the right to create a state within its territory, take out some of its older citizens, then claim it's now theirs. And on the other hand, Palestinian civilians and an entire Muslim nation argue that it's their land and that the holy site was always and will forever be theirs. But enough of that. I think it's time to settle this once and for all. Now both sides want full control of the territory, right? And Jerusalem being the home to some of the most holy sites for both parties means that none of them want to share the land. And even though there's been much talks about a two-state solution, it didn't happen over the course of 73 years now and I highly doubt this will happen anytime soon. And so this poses the question, who should in fact take over this territory? Who has the right to belong there? Who does Jerusalem belong to? Question, how could two entire nations, two separate entities be located on the same territory claim that a single piece of land is theirs, claim that they were always present throughout history and that their ancestors were always there, that they are in fact being the ones taken out of their homeland? You might think that the issue is much more complicated than believing that one side and one side only has the ultimate right to own the land. This has to be an issue that requires tons of research, right? A lot of time to look into. You've got both sides claiming that they have the right to defend themselves, that they are in fact being the ones that are oppressed, that they are the ones facing this discriminatory treatment. Except, the issue is much simpler than you Rabbis, think. Rabbis, when Zionism came, the concept of Zionism was developed. The Jewish rabbinical authorities universally said no. This you is might also opinion. think that both Palestine and Israel base their arguments on religion. Isn't that right? This is an issue of religion. Both want to acquire this piece of land because it resonates with what they believe in. Both want to own Jerusalem because it's a home to their places of worship. And so how could we possibly decide who's right and who's wrong? Who should stay and who should leave when it's simply a religious issue and nothing more? Again, it's not. You see... For one side, it actually is. The Muslim nation and the Islamic countries are so passionate about defending the Palestinian state and Jerusalem, mainly because they're home to Al-Aqsa compound, the third holiest site in Islam. But for the other, well, when we take a look at some biblical scriptures, we can see that it's in fact forbidden in the Jewish religion to create a Jewish state, or even attempt to do so. They were given a decree by God not to ever create their own sovereignty. Years ago, we were given an edict, a decree by God, uh, it's a prophecy of King Solomon, that we ought not to attempt to recreate our sovereignty. I mean, you've probably found it a bit odd and confusing that some of the members in the Jewish community are totally against this nationalist idea. I mean, how could a bunch of rabbis and Jewish scholars side with the opposite party, chanting things like... The truth is, the Israel premise has nothing to do with Judaism, nothing to do with religion. In fact, it's an issue of Zionism, and let's not confuse the two. Zionism is merely a political ideology and a nationalist movement. And don't think for a second that their authorities are ignorant of this. Their government knows exactly what it's doing. The idea that it's all for a religious cause has been packaged in a way where it distracts Israeli citizens and settlers from the harm they're causing. When your entire world buys into that narrative, friends and family, the media you consume, the organizations you join and if you grow up in Israel, your educational system, that is your reality. It's a false one, says Raphael Mimun, who lived and studied in Israel spending 12 years in a Zionist youth movement. You see, this is merely a political issue. 
nothing more, nothing less. But you might be wondering, well, Jerusalem still is a home for these places of worship of the Jewish community. That's true, but they were never forced to abandon their religion before the creation of Israel. Jews were never forced to stop practicing their faith under Islamic rule. Matter of fact, they were never even forced to leave Jerusalem in the first place. Their safest periods were in fact under Islamic power, but we'll discuss that soon. Now, you might say, Hassan, it doesn't matter if it's for a religious cause or not. The Jewish people have been granted political sovereignty nonetheless. Israel is a recognized state and you cannot deny it. And all of its actions are based on legal terms. Is that really true though? But in order to find out, I have to take you back in time first. Back to the year 1917. The year where the Balfour Declaration was issued by the British government announcing its support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. Get this, Jewish people were apparently given the right, the permission to create their own state in another country, in another homeland. Which leads me to my point, Israel's existence has no moral, not even any religious justification whatsoever. Besides, many of its actions are considered war crimes, and yes, illegal. Let me explain. Even though this Zionist project is recognized by the majority of UN states, Israel focuses on a strategy of annexation. Piece by piece, home by home, it steals parts of the Palestinian homeland by placing settlements within. And the UN itself, under Resolution 446, has confirmed that its settlements have no legal validity and pose a serious obstacle to peace. But wait, how come we've heard Israeli citizens say things like, <laughs> the Bible and the Bible right, Israel is the Jews. Why do you steal more and more Palestinian land? Uh, I question. Probably just God wants. God wants you to steal land? Well that's the problem. Israel justifies all of its actions based on a biblical statement. A biblical statement that could be interpreted in several ways. As it's stated in Genesis 15, 18, in that day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river of Euphrates. To live here simply because that Hashem gave the land to Abraham, that he promised to Abraham 4,000 years ago, that this will be a land for your children, that's actually just only half of the truth. This biblical the statement real... is the country's only claim to legitimacy. You see, the country doesn't have a firm two legs to stand on, a legal nor even a moral base to rely on. There's most definitely no moral case whatsoever for its existence. But since it's supported by some of the most powerful countries in the world, it unfortunately has the right to do whatever it wills. Good. Hopefully now we've all come to the conclusion that Israel doesn't have the right to exist. Or does it? I mean, one could argue that there is no such thing as an illegal country. There could be only a recognized and a non-recognized state. But you see, the main problem lies within how you treat the people you're governing. I mean, the Ottoman Empire ruled Palestine for about a period of 400 years, but no one really complains, do they? Those innocent Palestinians complain because they can't live in peace. They can't sleep at night without hearing the sound of rockets. <laughs> Speaking of peace, Jews in the Middle Ages were expelled from a lot of places. They weren't respected anywhere. But where did they find their peace, you may ask? They did under Islamic rule, and they most definitely don't deny it. You lived in Morocco? Yeah. And did you live well in Morocco? Fantastic. What we as the people most care about is, you guessed it, peace. I may assume that you and I don't like to see bloodshed. We want this conflict between the two sides to end, this war to finally stop. So this begs the question, under what rule, under what control would we find justice? Would we find peace? If I may take you back to the Middle Ages, you could see that Jew hatred was on the rise in Middle Age Europe. Jews at the time were fleeing from one country to another. Anti-Semitism was quite the trend. Those Jewish people found no one to protect them, no one to shelter them. They traveled from one place to the next, looking for a nation to welcome them in until they stepped upon the Ottoman Empire. You see, the Muslim Empire was the one at last to keep them safe. Looking at the 15th century mass expulsion of Jews from Spain, for instance, the Ottoman Empire were the ones to welcome them in, open their gates to a number of Jews and allow them to live peacefully therein. When it came to the treatment of non-Turkish, non-Muslim minorities, 
within the Ottoman Empire. Conditions for Jews and Muslim lands during the Middle Ages were generally favorable. Violence against Jews was rarely sanctioned at the highest levels of authority, and Jews were not expelled from Muslim nations as they were throughout the Middle Ages in Europe. It is when we compare the situation of Jews living in Christian lands against that of the Jews living in Muslim lands, we see that Jews were in a much better situation. These are the words of Michael Pitlick, a director of Judaic studies. And I do not claim that every Palestinian is a Muslim. There's a large population of Christians and a good amount of Jews too. Jews that actually support the Palestinian cause. That's actually but just But I very much so agree that the state of Israel much. shall control Jerusalem. I very much so agree that if you want peace for humanity, then let Palestinians control the land. I'm sorry to say that your mass media, the Western mass media, all is beside the Israelis. Your baby. That does not mean to say that uh, the enemies of Israel are our enemies. Your baby, your baby in this area. What are the main points that people that responded to this poll have with the Palestinian cause? The saga continues for 70 years now. They say number one, Article 11, UN Resolution 194. Everyone has a stake except us. For the Palestinians have the right to return home. We are the ones who have no say. It is affirmed again and again and again. What else do they say? And this wraps the end of the video. Now I know such a vast topic like this cannot be covered in a very short video like this one, but it was necessary, or at least I believe, to highlight and shed light on some of the issues that are currently circulating around the Palestine-Israeli issue. And while I was a bit late on um, producing this mini documentary, I still believe it was very important to, uh, to discuss what's, what's happening in that, in that occupied region of the world. And of course, this is a very controversial issue. And that's why I try to be as unbiased as possible. Now, as you can tell, I, <laughs> I do side with the Palestinian, with the Palestinian party, but because it's, it's only right to do so. What that nation has suffered is immense. And it's, and it's normal to feel helpless, knowing that you are on the, on the other side of the world, not able to aid, to help, to support, any, any of those oppressed people. And that's why it's very important to, to try to educate, to try to inform on what's currently happening over there. And as you know, these documentaries or mini documentaries take some time. So it would mean the world to me if you, if you help share some of this content. And of course, if you would like to be part of this community, you're most welcome to do so. I would love to hear what some of you think about what I've discussed and what topics I should discuss next. Inshallah, this is the start to something very very special and i hope you ride along with me on this journey and that's it till next time assalamu alaikum warahmatullah